Hey there everyone, welcome to our little tutorial on creating vector graphics from a scan of a photo or a scan of a drawing. Um, so in this tutorial, what I want to show you is just a couple of things um, to help you with your um, logo or, or mascot or your um, planner cover. Um, so this tutorial is going to be more useful for the mascot and logo, but I think the planner cover you could use some of the concept concepts here as well. So um, to get us started, what I want to do is show you a screenshot of a piece of paper I, I received from Mrs. Gorlitz a while back asking me to make a light board. And she wanted me to make a light board using the information here in this business card. Now there's only one problem with that. This is business card size. So it's about two inches by three inches and the light board is 24 inches by 36 inches. So I had a little problem. So I had this um, piece of paper. I scanned it into my computer. Um, and that would be similar to you scanning a piece of artwork that you want to bring in and convert into a vector graphic. So took this piece of paper into GIMP, um, I cropped it, and that's where we're going to pick up with Inkscape. So, we'll pull this guy down. And let's get Inkscape started here. Just one minute, technical problem. I seem to have, oh, that's an e-contest. You don't want that. There we go. Okay. So, um, we are going to start by importing the GIMP file. So we're going to go to import, file import. And right here you see dentist cropped copy. We're going to import this file. It's going to ask us if we want to link or embed. We want to embed. And there is the scan. So we're going to do a technique similar to our stamp effect here. Um, control plus will zoom you in in Inkscape. Control minus will zoom you out. I'm actually using a Mac, so I'm doing a command plus, command minus. So in order to do this, we first need to select our object. Then we're going to go to Path. And we're going to take a trace bitmap. Now, depending on the look you're going for, you can either do a brightness cutoff and play around with the threshold settings, or you can do an edge detect. An edge detect is probably going to give you a thicker edge than a brightness cutoff. So play, play around with both. You can play around with the number of colors that you're going to include, but black and white is probably going to be where you're going to want to start. So we'll do a brightness cutoff, say OK, and Okay, we'll close this guy up and then move. And you see we have and we now have a new trace of our graphic. And the thing that's different between the two is this is not a vector, whereas this one is. How do I know it's a vector? If I come here to the edit paths by nodes tool and click on it. It, you're going to see all these little paths and nodes and similar to your Fuji logo that you worked on, we can do some editing to these um, paths and nodes. Um, so I want to get rid of all of this text, everything out here. So we don't want any of that. I just want the teeth graphic in here. So in order to do that, I'm going to take an intersection. So I'm going to take a rectangle or maybe an oval, um, draw a rectangle or an oval over top of the graphic I want, choose my select, transform, and I also want to select my scan. So now I have both the pink rectangle selected and the original scan. I'm going to go to path and intersect. So where the pink 
rectangle intersects my, my trace is what I'm going to be left with. Um, looks like I didn't get it far enough, so we're going to try that one more time. Undo there. And there it goes. Okay, so now I have this vector graphic, and um, the nice thing about it is I can make it any size I want. If I hold shift, it's going to keep the ratio and proportion so I can make it big. And now it's very easy to see how I could use this for a light board. Looks like I have a little leftover right there. Get rid of that. Now, if I wanted to, I could. Um, add to what I have in this graphic, like let's say that I want to fix up right here. Um, I could add a Bezier curve. Maybe I want to fix right here. I could add a Bezier curve in there. Um, what is a Bezier curve? Um, I'm going to use this pen looking tool right here. You see it draws Bezier curves and it draws straight lines. Come right here. And I'm going to do a double click, and that's going to give me a line. I'll turn it red so that we can see it. Turn the stroke paint here. Notice I have fill and stroke open. Um, that's from the object fill and stroke. And I'll turn my line to red so we can see it. And then we're going to zoom in just a little bit. And now this works a lot like paths in GIMP. We drew the, the curve with um, our little Bezier curve tool. And now we're going to edit the, the, the paths with this tool right here, Edit Paths by Nodes. And I can simply pull on them. This guy is being a little sensitive. Let's see. I'm going to do that again. Let's start this Bezier curve deal over one more time here. Sorry, please. Uh, thank you for being patient. Let's start this guy over one more time. I'm going to go there. There. Turn them to red, and then move them. That's what. That's better. That's what I wanted. So just move them there and there. And if I double click on the lines, I get these handles that I can stretch like this. Okay. Now it's it's not quite filling in my gaps, so I would want to change my stroke style and make it a little wider that so we'll take the width up to two and then we'll turn the stroke paint back to black and click off and notice we have a nice curve now we filled in that gap um, and you could see pretty quickly how we could fix up the rest of this guy right here um, that's it for now I um, hope this tutorial is helpful in making your mascot or your logo or your planner cover till next time